Oh, hi. <laughs> I didn't see you there. Well, as you can see, I am reading a book. I read a lot of books. Is this cheesy yet? Yes, it is. But yet, you know what? I did this in 15 minutes, so it's gotta be cheesy. Come, 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 come. come. Now, I should tell you about all the books that I've read over the years. Now, this project was hard for me because picking seven books out of all these is hard because as you can see, I read a lot of books. Too many to count. But I narrowed them down for seven just for you and Nikki Leahy. Hi, Nikki. Anyway, let's begin, shall we? Okay, first book. First book. The Shape of Me and Other Stuff by Dr. Seuss. I'm not actually going to read it to you, because that would take too long, and let's be honest, you don't want to watch this. So I'm just going to tell you a little bit about it. It's been extremely important for me in many ways. It was one of the first books I remember from my childhood. Every night I would actually ask my father to read it to me, and I don't exactly remember exactly why, but it's most likely I like the illustrations and the rhyming, because um, even for Dr. Seuss, it wasn't that impressive of a plot. It's two kids. Talk about how much they like the shapes of everything they see, and they make up shapes. It was pretty cute. But also, this is the book that at the age of two taught me how to read. My mom actually has a video of me in, I would say, yeah, my bedroom, um, reading this book. And it wasn't just me making up stories about the book, it was actually me reading the book. It's pretty cute. You probably want to see it. But I don't have the technological prowess to do that, so I'm just, you're just gonna have to deal with that, okay? Okay. Oh, yes. This old beauty. Here it is. The National Geographic Encyclopedia of Animals is the second book on my list. The expanded edition, because I'm a nerd. Anyway, this I got oh, from when I was Christmas. It was Christmas present when I was six from my uncle. I actually found it a couple months in advance, but that's another story. It's pretty funny. But once again, time constraint. Anyway, you know, it's full of illustrations of animals, talked all about animals, it was just, for a kid who loved animals, it was heaven. I would read it all the time, and by all the time, I meant all the time, that's why it looks like this. Yeah, no, it was, I, I took it everywhere, even places I wasn't even supposed to take it. I think I was reading at a funeral. Once again, another story, not important. But let's move on. Okay. Ooh, yeah, yeah, yep. Yeah. Here it is. Another well-worn copy of Percy Jackson, the Olympians, The Lightning Thief by Rick Riordan, or Reardon. I've heard so many different pronunciations. I'm gonna go with Riordan. You're gonna have to deal with that. I don't care if you disagree. Hmm. Anyway, uh, yeah, no, uh, I got this in the summer before fourth grade from a family friend. Um, this book is incredibly important to me because when I was in elementary school, I had no friends. Guilt trip, guilt trip, guilt trip. Do you feel guilty yet? I bet you do. Anyway, yeah, no friends. So the, the characters in this book were my friends. I saw myself as them. I saw their flaws were my flaws, their skills were my skills, and I felt like I was going on the adventure with them. So this book is vitally important to me and my development and just who I am as a person. And luckily, I know I've made friends with the people who also read these books. So not only was it one of my first friends, it also helped me make new friends. So, you know, I turned out all right. I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. Anyway, what's... Ooh, yeah. Yeah, this is a fun one. This is one you're gonna like. Well, I liked it. Whatever. You're watching this video. You can't leave. Although probably some of you are. Whatever. Who cares? Anyway, this is Troy by Adele Garris. You're probably sensing the mythological theme. Yeah, I like mythology, science. Now I know why I had no friends. Whatever. Whatever. Moving on. Anyway. In eighth grade, I got a lot of books from my aunt. One of this was this one. Um, I was reading it. I was enjoying it. It was like about, it was about Troy and, uh, and the fall of Troy from the Trojan perspective. I found it fascinating. Nothing really wild going on, though. Pretty predictable because I knew the myth of the fall of Troy. And then I get up to one of the, the chapters and... And, um... I don't know how to put this lightly, but it had a sex scene in it. And it was the first book I had ever read with a, a scene so graphic. And it was sort of like a mark of my maturity, so that's why I picked it. If you're laughing right now, oh, grow up. You're probably all 18. Relax. But yeah, that's... I like that book. Not just for the sex in it. Not that. I'm not a perv. I just, it, was, it was a good book. It was a good book. It was just it was nice. Anyway. 
Ooh. There's another one. New York by Ed Rutherford. Big book, big book. You know, it didn't take me that long to read it. Like, you know, I'm just boasting a little bit. Anyway, uh, it was, um, this book is a saga of the history of New York City told in the eyes of one family from the settlement in the 1600s up to 9-11. And I just found it fascinating as like a kid who also liked history besides mythology and animals and every other nerdy thing that made me antisocial and friendless. Guilt trip, guilt trip, guilt trip. Anyway, uh, it was, I just enjoyed it tremendously. It was just, it talked about diversity and you know all the skills that built up New York and made it one of my favorite cities. And it was so cool reading a history of almost my home. And it will be my home, I'm moving there in the fall. So that's gonna be fun, yeah. Anyway, uh, so book number six. We're getting up to the book number seven surprise for the future. Stay tuned. Ta-da! Uh, this one is called Challenger Deep by Neil Shusterman. It was, this book was wow. This was a wow book for me because um, I've grown up with mental illness, anxiety disorder for ever since I was two. And this is probably the most accurate depiction of mental illness in a, the teenage mind, the, in the mind of a teenage boy that I have ever read in my entire life, it was, you know, it, 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 it shook me. That's how much, that's how much I love this book. So I thought I would include it because, you know, it reflected my struggles with mental illness and my overcoming of those mental obstacles as well. So yeah. yeah. Making a lot of attractive faces. You must be enjoying this. Anyway. Da, 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 da. Book number seven, the book that I'm going to read in the future is... I'm not creative. I didn't put anything up with this. It was, this is exhausting. Anyway, book number seven. Oh, upside down. Very good, Kevin. Uh, the Pilgrim's Progress by John Bunyan. It is the first novel written in the English language. And as someone who has read novels my entire life, I just really am fascinated to, real, to find where the original English novel came from. And this is it. So I just want to see, like early forms of dialogue and characterization, and yeah, it's a religious theme, but it's just, I'm always fascinated with history, and the history of literature is just something that is wow for me. And one small note, reason I'm wearing this, not for you guys, I was at a dinner earlier, so, you know, don't judge me. I didn't want to change. I look nice. But that is it. Thank you for watching. Uh, I hope I get a hundred for this. I worked hard on it, so, yeah. Goodbye, America.